An infinite switch is a device that is commonly used to control the amount of power to a cooktop burner. How does an infinite switch work though? What happens when they fail? This video will go into those details and more as we explore the inner workings and theory behind the infinite switch. As mentioned, it is used to control the amount of power to a cooktop burner. It does this by controlling the amount of time that the burner is energized for the total amount of time that the switch is turned on. This is similar to a technology called pulse width modulation. Thus, the infinite switch will keep the burner energized for a percentage of the total cook time. It does this by using something called a bimetal strip. This is a strip of two dissimilar metals joined together that have different temperature expansion characteristics. Thus, each layer expands at a different rate for a given temperature change. As current passes through the infinite switch to supply power to the burner, the strip heats up. The dissimilarity in the metals causes the strip to bend, thereby making and breaking the electrical connection. As the strip heats up and correspondingly the burner heats up, the strip bends and breaks the connection. As it cools down, it bends back and reestablishes the connection. Here's a schematic diagram of the infinite switch. Here's your 240 volt power supply. When you turn the knob on, L1 is automatically connected to one side of the burner. L2, however, which is the return path for L1, is regulated by the bimetal strip. This heater represents the heat that is used to bend the strip. The output of the bimetal strip is connected to the other side of the burner. This P terminal becomes live when you turn the switch on, which illuminates the burner on indicator lamp. The contacts for this function tend to get a coating of soot over time, which conducts electricity. This will falsely illuminate the burner on lamp, making the user think that the burner is on when it isn't. This is a common failure mode of infinite switches. To control the heat level of the burner, a knob is turned that is connected to a cam right here. This cam adjusts the pressure against the bimetal strip, which makes it harder to bend. As you can see here, you can see here that the strip rises and falls as you turn the knob. When the knob is turned to a higher heat level, more pressure is placed on the strip, making it harder to break the electrical connection. When the burner is turned on high, the strip is unable to break the connection, and the burner is set to full on. Here are some images that depict how the power is delivered to the cooktop burner for a given infinite switch setting. First, we'll set it on a low setting, which is about a quarter of the way around. This is analogous to a 25% pulse width modulation duty cycle, meaning that the burner is energized 25% of the total time that the burner is on. This means that for a 2000 watt burner, only 500 watts of power is being sent to it. For a medium setting, which would be 5 on this infinite switch, we have a 50% duty cycle, which equates to about 1000 watts of power being delivered to the 2000 watt burner. For a 3 quarter setting, approximately 75% duty cycle will occur, effectively delivering 75% of the available power to the burner. Finally, for the high setting, a 100% duty cycle will apply, delivering all the available power to the burner. Another common failure mode of the infinite switch is a regulation mechanism, or the bimetal strip, that physically wears out and is no longer able to regulate the amount of power getting to the burner. One such example is that it will cause a burner to stay on high even when the knob is set on medium or low. So this was an in-depth explanation of how infinite switches work and how they fail. I hope this has been interesting and informative. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.